Hello, I'm Darren Foote. Welcome to LearnToRestore.com. In this video, we're going to discuss the class of water intrusion as it relates to a water damage event. The S500 tells us that as restorers, we should estimate the amount of humidity control needed at the beginning of a project. This is largely determined by the class of water. The term class of water has to do with the potential rate of evaporation or what we call the evaporation load. In other words, how much water vapor is loading up into the air based on the types of materials that are wet and how wet they are. How much water is going to come up into the air that needs to be ventilated to the outside or dehumidified. The rate of evaporation is determined by many factors. The permeance of the materials or the ability for water vapor to move through them. Vinyl wallpaper, for example, is non-permeable or a vapor barrier. So if I have wet drywall behind vinyl wallpaper, it can't come through that and effectively dry it. Vinyl floor, the same situation. So the permeance will have a big impact. The porosity of the materials. The, the, the easier it is for water to get into the materials, the easier it is to dry it back out. Water soaks into carpet very easily and we can dry carpet very quickly. It takes much longer for water to soak into plaster or hardwood, things like that, and it's much more difficult and takes more time and energy to get that water back out of there. It's also determined uh, the class of loss by the amount of wet surface area will have an impact on the rate of evaporation. The more square feet I have of wet flooring, of wet walls, etc., the more water vapor will be coming up into that space. Also the level of saturation. Has the water affected the materials in a, lightly or is it deeply penetrated down into the materials? All these things, among others, will have an impact on the evaporation. Really what we're saying is, what's wet, how wet is it, and depending on the type of materials, how much water is going to come up into the air. And that allows me to set these recommendations of how much equipment I need to control the humidity in that environment. We break our classes down into class 1, 2, 3, and 4. Class 1, 2, and 3 have to do with the percentage of what's wet in my space or my drying chamber. And class 4 has to do with the type of materials or assemblies that are affected. And it just comes down to a percentage. On class 1, I'm going to say, okay, what's the total square footage I have in my space of walls, floors, and ceiling? And then if, if I have less than about 5% of that is wet or affected by the water, that would be a class 1 loss. It's the least amount of water damage, therefore the least amount of evaporation, and the least amount of dehumidification I'm going to need. So class 1, less than about 5% of the overall space is wet or affected by the water intrusion. A class 2, now it's between 5 and 40%. So I have much more affected area, therefore more evaporation, and therefore more vapor to get rid of through dehumidification or ventilation. So between 5 and 40% of the affected space being wet is a class 2. And then anything over 40% would be a class 3. Much more water, the greatest amount of wet affected materials, the greatest amount of evaporation taking place, the greatest amount of necessary dehumidification. So to, to illustrate what we're talking about here, a drying chamber, or the space we're talking about, is the air that's affected, in essence, by my dehumidifier. It could be part of a room if you've got plastic up, it could be an entire room, it could be multiple rooms, it could be the entire structure. And you could have multiple drying chambers in the same structure. So we'll use on this one just a simple room. We've got a room that's 36 by 14 by 12 feet tall. If we're trying to determine the class on this, depending on how much of it is wet, we'd say, okay, first of all, what's the total square footage of my surfaces? My floor is 36 by 14, and so that's 504 square feet. The ceiling is the same dimensions, also 504 square feet. My first wall on the back is 36 by 12 high, that is 432 square feet. The next wall coming around is uh, wall number two is 14 by 12 for a total of 168 feet. Wall number three is the opposite of wall one, same dimensions, 36 by 12, 432 square feet. And wall four is opposite of wall two, 14 by 12, 168 square feet. So I've got my floor, all my walls, and my ceiling, and those combined in total is 2,208 square feet. So remember, if it's less than 5% of that that's wet, it's a class 1. If it's between 5 and 40% of that is wet, it's a class 2. And more than 40% would be a class 3. So if I have 2,208 square feet times 5%, that would be 110 square feet. Therefore, any area of that drying chamber, that space, in this instance, this room that's 109, 109 square feet or less that's wet, would be a class 1 loss. So if I have 109 square feet of wet floor, if I have 109 square feet or less of wet ceiling, if I have 109 square feet or less of wet wall, or combined, if I have 109 square feet or less of wet wall and floor, or floor and ceiling or whatever, if it's, if it's less than 110 square feet in this particular example, that would be a class 1 loss. 
Let's say, however, in this example, that we have uh, wall, the floor, the entire floor, and wall number four are totally wet. Then in that instance, we'd have 672 square feet. Well, anything between 110 and 2,208 square feet times 40% is 883. So between 110 and 883 would be a class two loss. 672 square feet is between 110 and 883. That would be a class two loss. Let's say we add another uh, area on there. The ceiling is also wet. Now I've got the floor, the ceiling, and wall number four for a total of 1,176 square feet. Well, if it's more than 40%, in this example, 883 square feet, that would be a class three loss. So in this situation, 1,176, the wall, the floor, and the ceiling would be a class three loss. So pretty simple to do the calculations. I do my moisture mapping, figure out overall how much space there is in my uh, drying chamber, the percentage of what's wet, and that's class one, two, or three. Class four changes gears a little bit. As I mentioned, class four is not about the percentage of what's wet, but the type of materials that are wet. So reading from the, from the definition of a class four loss, this is deeply held or bound water. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as trapped water. It involves a significant amount of water absorption into low evaporation materials. So the examples it gives are plaster and wood and concrete and masonry. Those materials that take a long time for the water to get in, it binds in there, therefore it's hard to get it back out. Low evaporation, it's not easy to remove that water out of there or low evaporation assemblies. How are those materials put together? We have floor assemblies and wall assemblies and ceiling assemblies. So for example, if you have multiple layers of subfloor, if you have a gym floor, if you have multiple layers of wall board uh, or other complex built up assemblies. And because of this, the drying times are going to be more difficult. You're gonna have to have good vapor pressure differential uh, and, and it takes a little bit longer to get these dry. So if I have a hardwood floor and a little bit of it is wet in the corner, that's going to be a class four loss. If I have an entire hardwood floor that's wet, a class four loss. It's not about percentage or, or how much of an area is wet, it's the type of materials. Thank you so much for joining us on this video. We'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, thank you.